and welcome to the show. Now, if you watch this channel regularly, you know that when it comes to videos, a lot of what I end up doing, a lot of what we end up focusing on is a little bit more light-hearted side of racing, shall we say. The slightly wacky stuff on Forza and on GTA, and while you can be quite competitive at times, it's always a little bit silly, and, and hopefully plenty of fun. Uh, that being said, I do also enjoy the more serious side of sim racing, and while perhaps I haven't done as many videos on it, uh, I still do enjoy the likes of a set of Corsa, or some of Blister, I racing, Gran Turismo Sport even, from time to time, I do have a proper sim racing, a, a, a sim rig setup, if you like, in my office. And when Thrustmasters got in contact with me and asked if I wanted to have a go with their new steering wheel, naturally, I was pretty excited to give it a try. This is the T248 uh, wheel. I mean, the first thing, the main thing, I main thing I was most excited about is it works on PlayStation, which <laughs> means I was going to get to try the wheel on Gran Turismo Sport. I've only ever driven Gran Turismo Sport on a controller. Uh, so here is the here is the wheel uh, mounted up onto my sim rig. It's a nice looking wheel. I, I've got to say, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's a very nice, uh, nice looking setup. Uh, it's covered in cat hair. It was literally, I filmed this literally five minutes after putting the damn thing on the sim rig and it's still too late. Cats will be what cats will be. Um, but yeah, it looks fantastic. The actual base part, if you like, is smaller than I'm used to with previous wheels. I had a Thrustmaster TX before this one, and the actual physical base is considerably smaller, which is very helpful. I would imagine if you know if you don't have a single, you've got to clamp it onto a desk, for example. It just gives you a little bit more flexibility uh, in terms of mounting it where you're going to put it. I haven't tried this on my desk; it just went straight onto the Simric, so I don't know what the clamp's like for it. Um, it does come with a pedal set as well. Actually, a really, really nice set of pedals. I've got to say, I much prefer these to the previous ones I was using. Um, plenty of adjustability in them, including in the brake pedal, you've got a spring that you can change out for different stiffnesses and so on. I think there's about four different settings you can have it for, uh, which is really nice, really helpful. I've had issues with uh, pedals in the past not really being uh, so great for sort of a brake feel. And this one, this one, I left it on the standard and it was immediately what I wanted from it. So <laughs> that's always helpful. Yeah, it is a, a very, very nice looking um, a wheel. So I fired it up. I've tried it on uh, a bunch of different games for just this recording. I was using some Automobilista 2. I do really like this game. Uh, the the force feedback on this game is fantastic. Uh, I will I will say that much, which is why I thought it was a, a good test for this wheel. I mean, it's difficult to describe force feedback to you in commentary. It's, you can't really ever see much from a wheel camera. You might see the wheel shaking a little bit in places. Um, but yeah, what I will say is using this say for the first time, if you like, it felt good. It was easy to adapt to, it was easy just to get into whatever it was and go for a drive around it, and I felt like I was getting the information that I wanted, the information that I needed uh, back from, you know, from, from the force feedback that I would expect from a wheel. Okay, no, this isn't the ultra high-end stuff. Okay, this is much more aimed as a sort of entry-level wheel, if you like, as I managed to make a bit of a mess of a <laughs> first big braking zone. Look, GT1 cars at Alton Park is a, actually quite a fun experience, but sometimes you've got to be careful in this. Um, but yeah, as far as force feedback goes, it is it, it is very good. Certainly on North Blister, a couple of sims I tried it on. It was good. Race Room was another one I had to go with, and I liked it. On Gran Turismo Sport, uh, I will say it felt a little bit... Um, Grabby is the best word I can really describe uh, what it was like. It, up to the limit, it was fine, and if it went over it, it kind of got a little bit... I said a little bit odd, but I think that was more the game than it was the actual wheel, because on everything else I drove it on, I drove it on the PC stuff, it was absolutely fine. So, I think that might be a little bit Gran Turismo, um, perhaps. Uh, but still, yeah, it's... It, has, it gives me all the information that I was wanting from the vehicle. Now, one of the things you will, uh, of course, notice the big difference for me, really, is this wheel has got a display on it. You can see me now playing around with some of the settings uh, for this. And you can set it to show different things. So we can have... Uh, so it was set to just gears uh, with a little rev counter going along the bottom. You can have it set to actually display the revs if you want. You can set it to show you what lap plumber you're on. You can set position. Now, this was just in a time trial, so it didn't really matter. You can also get it to show your fastest lap, your last lap, your personal best, all of that sort of information, current lap going on at the moment. Okay, is that going to be a massive thing that you use? Not a lot of the time. No, you're going to be busy focusing on you know, the actual driving part. Is it a fun, nice little addition to have? Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so at the moment I've got it showing the current lap now, that would be on the screen where the wheel camera is at the moment. Uh, but yes, that information is often found elsewhere, but there are other uses to it as well. 
For example, uh, you can set the wheel rotation while you're in a game. Now, I've had a lot of problems in the past with <laughs> trying to get my wheel rotation of the wheel to match up with the one in the game. I think I ended up running on a set of Corsair at one point. It was completely wonky. It was just, I'm going to make do with this because I can't get it to behave, so it'll work, and I kind of learned wonky steering. Um, I had a lot of problem with this, but the fact that I can actually adjust it in game, I've had better luck getting this working, shall we say, than I have in the past. And being able to adjust it on the wheel itself, you've got a screen to see what it's doing, is pretty damn helpful. That, that, that's that's one of my favourite things, actually. To, to be fair about this, is being able to being able to do all of that. Uh, you can also there's a bunch of other settings you can do. It can actually even display the temperature of all the wheel going on essentially if you're overheating it or something uh, so yeah it's it's a neat little thing to have as i said as far as having it showing you know gears or speed or whatever revs etc um yeah you're probably not going to it might be a little easier just glancing down quickly at the wheel than it is to find where it is on the screen perhaps uh depending on what you're used to and so on but yeah Again, it looks cool. I'll say that much. It does look it does look very nice um, when, when you're going around with it. Um, as far as sort of build quality goes, um, I've only had it for a week and a bit, so of course I'm not going to be able to tell you in terms of longevity. It certainly feels sturdy. Uh, wheels I've had in the past, some of the buttons haven't felt the sturdiest on them. Felt like they might ping off. They never have, but they never. Have. This feels like a good wheel. It, it feels solid. It feels well made. Um, I mean, I drove, I spent an evening, a couple of evenings actually, on Gran Turismo Sport uh, running races, and it's a comfortable steering wheel to, to be using uh, for, for longer periods of time. Uh, the, now, the paddle shift on this, we'll talk about this uh, for a moment. It's uh, quite a loud upshift on this one. I will, I'll swap it to the camera audio rather than game audio for a second so you can hear it going. It's quite a loud click. It's quite a solid um, shifting thing as well. It's uh, you get quite a lot of force behind this, or more force than I'm perhaps expecting uh, from it. But yeah, overall build quality for it feels uh, feels yeah, very very good. And as I said, comfortable wheel to use for uh, longer periods of time. Now, <laughs> overall, I have very much enjoyed using this wheel. I think it's a really really solid wheel. And I have as I said. I fired it up on Gran Turismo Sport. It was something I've been really looking forward to trying, actually, <laughs> racing with it on Gran Turismo Sport, and had a lot of fun uh, running a few races on that. We may well see more videos on Gran Turismo Sport going forward, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, there are... I say there's some downsides to it. Uh, so the wheel itself costs £300. This is aimed as a kind of higher entry level spec wheel if that makes any sense it's not competing with some of the really really fancy stuff you can spend thousands and thousands on sim racing gear if you want but this is more of a you know i want to try some grand Turismo sport on a steering wheel I want to try some pc games i racing or whatever this is a really really good place to start it's a fantastic place to start because as i said you get all the information you need in terms of the driving uh kind of yeah, coming back to you, I'm not a professional level sim racer, so yes, maybe the real high-end stuff you'll get a type, you'll get a bit more, but I'm not going to be able to use that information to be perfectly honest with you. So, for for me, for this sort of, I say sporadic, um, but yeah, for for entry level purposes, it's fantastic. It isn't cheap. Three hundred quid is still a lot of money for something that you are not going to be using. You're only going to be using on certain games, um, and it doesn't have a removable uh, rim for the for the setup which does kind of surprise me in many ways now okay does this bother me personally no not really but the, the tx i used to use had one i never changed the wheel rim on it whatsoever i just used whatever it came with and that was fine but if you're you know you're going into this with an entry you know, it's going as, a, as an entry level wheel if you want to upgrade from this you can't now go and put a different you know a different wheel rim a fancier wheel rim on it if you want you're kind of just stuck with it so you'd have to start all over again it feels like a slight little bit of a missed trick on this one it's it's again to me it's certainly nowhere close to a deal breaker and i would still say as far as an entry level wheel goes this is a very very good option this is the option probably to go for uh, yes 300 pounds does put it quite close to the fanatic direct drive base that you can get yes that is also about 300 pounds but you've got to bear in mind while that is a very very fancy system and i do like it that's 300 pounds just for the base 
okay? That doesn't include a rim or pedals, as far as I'm aware. So this, you get everything you need to go and plug it in and go play Gran Turismo, go play whatever racing game it is that you want uh, for that money. Yeah, it is... it is pretty damn good. It, it is pretty damn good. As I said, I've really, really enjoyed uh, driving around with this one. I think it's a solid upgrade. Uh, to, <laughs> it's what I've been... Uh, I say the upgrade. I guess it's kind of a little bit more of a, a, a slightly side and forward step to what I had uh, previous, uh, previously. Um, but yeah, as far as a higher end entry level wheel goes, you really, really cannot go wrong with this. Um, hopefully, I've got some ideas. I've got, I've got some wacky ideas coming up uh, that we're going to see this this will be used for, and we may well see some more sim racing stuff as well. Because yeah, I've, I've with this nerve set up, I found myself thoroughly enjoying uh, the likes of Gran Turismo Sport a little bit more, and yeah, have been having some really good fun, some really close races, and so on. Um, so yeah, hopefully there shall be some more some more sim racing and some more that kind of content uh, going on because yeah it is it is a, a very nice a very nice sort of piece of kit for for what it is now we can't be having a fail race video with some real life footage in it without a cat making an appearance yes this was me setting up initially to go and record uh, <laughs> literally sat down and eve had been asleep she had not been bothering me whatsoever but the second I sat down to go and record, she decided that the best idea, the best thing to possibly go and do, was to go and get in the way. Because of course she did. Um, this is why. This is why I can't have nice things, and this is why everything is covered in cat <laughs> I think they're molting at the moment, which does it well. To say it doesn't make life easy. But um, yeah, she just decided she wanted to fuss and to headbutt everything. So I can say, as far as steering wheels go, this one has got the cat headbutt seal of approval. Cass hasn't licked it yet. Um, he doesn't make an appearance, I'm afraid. Only Eve was interested in the steering wheel. Um, Cass has a weird habit of licking everything once whenever something new appears. In that. I don't, don't ask. Cats are weird, as you can see by this one. <laughs> Currently <laughs> demanding attention and getting in the way and trying to knock stuff over. And just generally being a bit of a pain. I will say, after filming this as well, at one point I was playing Grand Trismo and she did exactly the same thing. She sat on my lap and didn't want to move. So I thought, screw it, I'll just go racing. And she ended up sat there for an entire like 10 minute race. Apparently wasn't bothered by the fact that I... This is not normally a problem you have when it comes to sim racing. Uh, but <laughs> I say that actually, lots of people have pets. Lots of pets get in the way. Either way. <laughs> of course, it was typical. She had to make an appearance at the second. I literally pressed start on the camera and that's... That's what we were dealing with. Um, but yeah, there we go. It's a fair, it's a proper fair race video of something vaguely real life. There has to be a cat getting in the way of the camera. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, as far as the world goes, I, I do really like it. I think as an entry level piece of kit, it is really, really good. Slight missed trick with not being able to really upgrade it that easily. Um, but yeah, if you are contemplating getting into sim racing or you've got quite an old wheel and want something upgrading but not going for you know thousands and thousands of pounds, this is a really, really good place to start. Uh, especially, you know, for PlayStation, for Grand Turismo Sport. A lot of people getting into kind of sim racing through there. Um, so, there we go. That is going to be it for this, for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, a goodbye.